Hey folks and welcome to They Might Be Racing. Uh, tonight I wanted to talk a little bit about soda blasting. So, um, <clears throat> soda blasting has become very popular out in the industry because you can theoretically do things and have a lot less environmental impact. It's also safer um, and more importantly it's really good for dealing with very soft materials. So on my vintage cars, particularly the British ones, there's a ton of aluminum on these cars and when you go and you want to clean it up basically the only option you have is to sit there and wet sand it and that's a miserable experience. Um, but uh, say for example you have an intake manifold off a of Jensen Healy or you know any other you know Austin Healy Sprite or whatever and you really want to clean it up you want to soda blast it. Now <clears throat> um, when I first started experimenting there really wasn't a lot of good information out there on the internet. There's a lot of stories about, you know, well, I did this, and I did that, and this works, and this doesn't. And the only really good information I could find was for multi-thousand dollar systems, which is, you know, out of the scope of what we could use at home. So I went and I uh, tried it on my old pressure pot, which is a standard sandblasting 40-gallon pressure pot. Failed miserably, clogged the whole thing up, gunked it up, and made a big old mess. Then later on, uh, Harbor Freight came out with one of these, which is their soda blaster. This is the smaller one. <clears throat> and this, surprisingly, for a Harbor Freight item, worked on the first try. I didn't have to change anything, didn't have to fix anything, didn't have to fiddle with it. But it basically, the way it works is it hooks into your um, air compressor here, you fill it up with the media, and then you go ahead and you just go to town blasting whatever it is you want. Now. The problem with this is the same problem that I have with most other open air blasting units. You make a great big horrifying mess. Um, I did a couple of rims with this took forever. It was not fun. So I decided to see what I could do in my home shop that would allow me to soda blast these aluminum parts, these soft parts, but you know keep it nice and neat and tidy and clean and all of that. So you'll see behind me my old uh, media cabinet. This was the one from the original media cabinet modifications videos. It's actually been retired from regular sandblasting use. I now have a bigger floor standing unit that I use. And also you'll see behind me, I finally bought a decent sized air compressor. So what I found is as long as you've got a good sized air compressor and a siphon feed uh, sandblasting setup, the main thing you have to do is make sure you can find the smallest diameter nozzle possible for your gun. You do that, you can switch over to, to soda blasting. So, um, in my first experiments, we went and tried this. You know, had my old little shop vac hooked off to the side, and as you can see, not all the experiments were successful. Um, what I found out is that because you're basically pushing massive amounts of um, air through your air compressor, you have to be able to deal with that volume coming out. Otherwise, the whole thing clouds up and cakes up and you can't work with it. So we ended up having to go out and buy a new shop vac. We got one of the really big, um, rigid branded stainless steel side, big monstrosities. Um, and that works, that's effective enough to pull enough air out that you can soda blast in a small cabinet like this. The, the main caveat to that is that soda will cake a filter very, very quickly. So you want to get a sock or build a sock to go around the filter or something that will catch the soda so that you can clean it off and then reuse the filter. But um, other than that, what I found from switching over is it's a very painless process. Uh, the major things that you have to keep in mind when you start soda blasting versus traditional sand blasting is it's a little bit more of a patience game. Um, the better you can clean something off before you put it in the box to, to clean it off or to, to blast it, the better you'll be. The other thing is is that when you when you media blast with, with baking soda, it creates a very, very fine film across the entirety of the object that you're blasting. And you have to deal with that. Um, basically, you can't paint, prep, or do much else with it after it's been done until it's been cleaned. And so... Go harkening back to my, you know, volcano experiment days in sixth grade, I remembered that, you know, baking soda, vinegar, <laughs> big volcano. So what we did is we took a couple of spray bottles, and I've got a wet sink in the 
room next door where I can rinse parts at, you take a, soda, a spray bottle full of vinegar and spray it all over the part once you're done, rinse it off with hot water, and it's all cleaned up. If you then need to paint it, you need to put the, you know, do the proper wipe down for painting. Um, if it's an exposed part that goes in your engine, it's basically done, and at that point you can go ahead and do things like polish it on the buffing wheel or use it as is, you know, what have you. But the, the nice thing about all of this, as I found, is that despite all the equipment they have out on the market that, you know, costs thousands of dollars to get started with soda blasting, with basically tools that you may already have or things you might need to get, you can do it for a relatively small sum of money. The, the one caveat on that, and I'll point back to my air compressor, is it requires a lot of power. So you have to have a good compressor. That old compressor that I showed in my original introduction to sandblasting video, that little guy wouldn't cut the mustard. You know, in fact, he's been handed off to somebody else now who's out there learning how to do all of this stuff. So as long as you've got, say, 9 CFM or better, you got a box to contain it in, you've got the proper air clearing system with a shop vac or, or a dust handler, you're all set. Uh, the more you can the more you can put in obviously the more pressure you can, you can continuously use, the better off you'll be. Um, I wish I had an example to show you, but uh, I just did the intake covers and, and cams and such and or cam covers for my Jensen Healy project. Those have been shipped out to the head shop, so until I get them back, I can't show you what I've done. But uh, it's definitely, it is the home enthusiast, if you've got a lot of aluminum, got a lot of soft parts, this is definitely worth trying. And the nice thing is, is if you normally, say, blow sand through a box like this, you clean it out, throw some soda in, give it a go. If it doesn't work for you, go back to sand. Or aluminum oxide is, you know, sand is a colloquial term. But basically, you know, if it works, keep doing it. If it doesn't work, you've got more options. Uh, anyways, for tonight, I just wanted to share our latest little shop tech with you. Um, hadn't shared any shop tech in a while, so figured it was time to, to let you guys know what I've modified in my shop to make auto restoration easier.